All right, everybody, quick uh, update here to show you guys what's new. Um, as you have probably seen in my previous videos, I finished up the M1 here. I got the wow sound in it, and uh, it's running good now. There's the box over there. Um, and then last week was my birthday, so um, I actually just asked for money from everybody. And I saved up enough money to buy, yes, another brass train. So this is a PRR 280, 8-class H8. Um, so I got this from the same seller as the person I got the M1 from. Um, so it was also a deal just like the M1. Um, so I got that last week. I bid on it. And it came today. So here it is. You can see, there it is. And one way to tell that it's an H8 is the cylinders. Um, let me grab something to point with. I actually just learned this today when I was reading about the Pennsylvania 280s. The uh, H9 and H10 will have the steam um, uh, like release um, from the boiler. They have those um, pipes exposed. But I actually read on the H8, they're internal. So that's why you can see there's no pipes going between the cylinders and the boiler like you would normally see here. You can see that pipe is internal. So that's how you can tell it's an H8. And there's also a few piping that's emitted on the boiler, no air tanks, stuff like that. So this is an H8, it's Sunset Models. And it's newer than the M1, so let me back the M1 out of the way, and then I'll show you guys the H8. So as you can see, the M1 is running good. I'll just back that up over there. Hit the brake. I'll actually mute that so you can hear what I'm saying better. So the M1's running good, and the H8 is actually newer than the M1. So it has the same motor in it. I've taken it apart already and looked at it. It has the same can motor as the M1. It has a Canon can motor. Um, and then it has a different gearbox, though. So I think it's a newer gearbox, because the M1 said it was made in 1995. Um, and then the auction for this one said 2001. So this one's newer and more updated than the M1 as far, as far as running gear goes. But it's the same deal as the M1. Uh, I got it from the same seller. So has did has uh, decoder in it already for DCC. Although it's a Digitrax, so I'll, put it, I'll be putting wow sound in it. Um, and as with the M1, there are, is motor noise. But that's from the decoder as I found. Because they're so, as you can see, I have a wow sound decoder over here, ready to go in. I have the speaker and everything else on order, though, and lights and everything. So those are on order, but I already have the uh, wow sound decoder. I had an extra one. So the speaker's on order, um, and then I also ordered a new soldering iron because this, you know, this is old, and I need to step it up to something more, you know, experienced because I do a lot of soldering. So. I actually got a Weller soldering station, so that's on the way too, and I'll get that for this installation. So, um, so as you can see, it has DCC in it already. It has a Digitrax decoder, and the back EMF isn't good on those. I know that, so the wow sound, I'm pretty sure, will fix any noises, because it runs smooth, um, smoother than the M1 ever did, and the M1 runs perfect with the wow sound, so um, I have no concerns with this thing running nicely um, but for it was actually a nice surprise because I knew it would have a headlight in it but I want to change that out for LED um, it has jewels for the marker lights but I actually when I put on the track I was surprised to find that it actually has a um, firebox light on it as you can see now this isn't wired into the decoder the firebox light is just wired to the track power I'll show you guys here so you can see it comes off but it's not controlled by any functions on the decoder. It's actually just wired to the track hookups. So it just gets constant power from the track. So 
basically whenever the locomotive is on the track, the firebox flicker will be on. So I'll leave that in there and then I won't have to worry about adding that. But I'm also going to put a cab light in this one to show the detail in there. Um, and then I'll be putting the headlight in here. So let me uh, show you guys it running. Um, it looks really nice and it runs really smoothly. Um, I really am pleased with it. Um, I think I got a good deal on it because the seller actually included a bill sheet from when it was bought new. He actually had a sheet from the actual hobby stop, um, hobby shop this was bought from new back in 2001 I guess and he had like the bill materials of what was bought like as far as the custom paint job how much all that was and compared to the price of that and what I got this for I got it for a deal so um, let me show you it running so here I'll put it in reverse and show you So as you can see, it's smoother than the M1 ever ran, if you watch that video. The M1 wasn't this smooth with the uh, old decoder in it, although once I put the wow sound in it, it was fine, but it wasn't this smooth from the beginning, so I have a feeling this is going to be a smooth runner once I get that wow sound in it, because TCS's motor control is just awesome. So uh, there you can see it running, it's at 12 speed steps, there's no hesitation or anything, it's just a nice smooth runner. And uh, you can see the uh, nice firebox light in there. That looks pretty nice. Uh, there's that. And then I'll stop it and bring it back here. So, um, on this one, for the WOW sound decoder, on this one actually, I have the non Keep Alive version. Um, I have the Keep Alive version in the M1. Um, but this one here I'll show you is just the non keep alive version as you can see it just has the regular small capacitor on there which I could solder keep alive into it if I need it but um, the only thing I'm concerned with with this locomotive because it's so small I mean you can see it compared to some of my other locomotives it's like not long at all so the boiler there's not much room to actually put the keep alive inside so basically the wow sound decoder itself would be a tight fit I don't think there would be any room for keep alive unless I ran the wires back to the tender um, I don't know if they'll look into that but I'll see how it runs without the keep alive first because um, I haven't really cleaned the wheels on the locomotive yet and I mean as you guys can see it runs pretty smoothly I don't think it really has any issues with track power so we'll see how it does and then I'll you know go from there but um, so look for the installation soon because the I got the email today that the sound decoder or not the sound decoder the speaker and the lights and everything I need to get it done they shipped today I noticed and my soldering iron station should be here soon so I'll get that up and running um, so yeah um, here's the 280 it's my newest locomotive and uh, look for the sound insulation soon. I guess I'll just show it running for the next shot. So I think I'll hook it up to this train. I haven't really pulled any cars with it yet. We'll see how much it can pull. But it has the same motor as the M1 and it has a decent weight to it. So we'll see. Here, I'll pull it forward and just hook it up to the cars over here. So you can see it's really quiet and runs smoothly. So I'm happy with that. Although, of course, because of the Digitrax back EMF, um, it struggles a little bit on curves. That it kind of slows down, but I know from the M1, all that will be fixed once I get the wow sound in it. So, um, you know, as you can see, my Pennsylvania steam fleet is growing. I got the 280, I got the I1, I got the K4, and the M1. So, now I got a pretty uh, nice fleet going here. But in the future, I'd like to get an L1 and possibly more. So we'll see. So here, I'll just hook the cars up to it and see if this will pull it. Now, this is like 15 cars, I think. So, although they're pretty heavy cars, like the coal cars in the back here, they're all pretty much weighted. So we'll see. So here, I'll pull. Um, Actually, let me move the M1 forward first. Let me unmute it.
So you guys can see the M1 running for a little bit. So this runs really nicely now. I mean, I don't know if you saw my video when I got it new, but with the old decoder, the Digitrax one, this thing actually didn't run very well at all. And now it runs very nicely. So we put the brake on. And move it forward a little bit. All right, and now I'll get the 280 rolling. So let's see how it does. Um, let me put it in forwards. Oh, yep, looks like the 280 can pull it. We'll get her going there. Of course, because of the uh, back EMF, it takes a few more speed steps to get it going, but looks like it's pulling it. Yep. So this thing should be a pretty decent puller. Although it is mainly just a switcher engine and a light local train puller, I guess. The 280s and the Pennsylvania Railroad, they were mostly in yard service by the end of the steam era. So, you know, they'd just pull shorter local trains, which is kind of what this is, I guess. But if I run at the club with the grades, I'll probably only run it with like 10 cars, maybe less. So, here it comes. I'll give you a shot. stop it. So uh, there you go. There's my new locomotive. It's right here. And uh, look for more stuff in the future.